I think Igo is a wonderful football was a wonderful football player and a great football coach. Sunil is similar man. You would always see him first and leave last. I don't think we should blame people. I think we need to introspect and build the next crop because of his intelligence. I worked with him personally. He's a very sharp, very sharp boy. Hello everyone and a warm welcome to today's podcast where we talk about everything related to Indian football. Uh, there are going to be two episodes for this interview, so make sure you tune in for the second part as well. Uh, we have a very special guest joining us today. Uh, we have Mr. Eric Benny with us, former manager of the Indian national football team during the 2010 Asian Games in China and the Olympic qualifiers in 2011. He is also the founder of the Eric Benny Sports Management, a multinational organization operating in India, France, and Germany uh, that works in grassroots development of football. Uh, please join me in giving me a warm welcome to Mr. Benny. Uh, it's a, f- a lot of pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Shine. I'm your. Go- I'm going to uh, going to be your host for t- uh, today's session, and we also have Rishwin Joseph joining with us, uh, a colleague of ours. Uh, he's also an ardent football fan and a journalist at the Bridge. So yeah, welcome, Rishwin. Welcome to you as well. Hi, Shine. Hi, Eric, sir. Hello, Rishwin. Yeah. we should get started then uh we'll jump right into the questions and we'll begin with our first segment which is called highlights uh this has four questions sir i'll take those one by one with you uh and uh, rishwin as well so we'll just start it off with uh, the most recent development in indian football and that was india's campaign at the world cup qualifiers which uh, ended abruptly uh, uh, just last week So, in this campaign at the World Cup qualifiers, so what were your thoughts on it? Uh, were you satisfied? Were you not? Tell us all about it. Okay, so yeah, being uh, like I always say, I'm a student of this beautiful game, and God has been very kind that I've had this privilege to serve my nation. Well, when I look at it from my personal perspective, I feel a bit disappointed because as a nation, we've gone ahead and done so much. you know in terms of investment in, in in terms of time in terms of giving them so many opportunities and well you want your players you expect your players to do and perform at a very high level you know especially when when you see that they are doing well at isl and they are they're doing they're getting game time the young players and the older players and the star players so when they come together the national team you, you have a certain expectation and you're like all blue you know you're bleeding blue and you want your country to do well but yeah i mean the result is in front of us did we get yeah we got robbed of the of the opportunity to go to the next round but yeah i mean what can we say it is this is football though everybody protested though the boys did their bit but i feel that qatar really broke our hearts so yeah disappointed but there's hope there's hope Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, let's come to the controversial refereeing decision uh, that became the talk of the town. Uh, at the point that it happened, Rishvin, I know you must have been watching same as me. What was your first reaction like? Because it was something unbelievable for me. I've never seen anything like that decision. Yeah, I was very disappointed because uh, that shouldn't be to happen in a World Cup qualifier match, and uh, that decision really killed the game. because we were attacking good we were defending good but the 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 mistake from the referee really spoiled our chances as well and we considered our second goal as well so that was really disappointing i and i must say that afc or fifa should look at these kind of things because this is a very important match and they should have implemented war in this games because it's about the world cup qualification and a team like india always dream about this kind of thing so it was really disappointing to see us lose that match yeah absolutely uh, so there have been uh, two camps following that match one camp has been of the opinion that that decision cost us the entire tournament i mean the qualifiers and there's been a, uh, another opposing camp which is like but we did drop points against teams like afghanistan and kuwait before that which we shouldn't probably have so sir if i ask you which camp would you be fall in 
Uh, you know, you think uh, that was the turning point? I, I, I would like to balance it out. I'll tell you why. So, for example, as players or as mentors or as football managers or administrators, when we go into a game, we have a certain strategy. When the strategy doesn't work, we improvise. And that's life for us. That's how we've always led our life. Would I know people talk about losing to Afghanistan, but I'll give you a, year, a very serious fact about Afghanistan. Most of the Afghani players are not playing in India, uh, not playing in Afghanistan. They are playing in Europe. Please mind that because they moved on, on asylums and they are playing very high level football in, in Europe. They're playing third division and the fourth divisions. And that's not easy. That's very, very high level competitive football compared to back home. So when you talk about football with Afghanistan, please bear that in mind. It's not, we're not talking economy. We're not talking governance, not democracy. We're talking about a game. And, you, and look at them with respect because they are coming for their country and they've fled from their country because of their current circumstances. Making a new life in a foreign country where acceptability is also an issue. Understand that. And then they play there and they come and you know, do well on their pop. So I have respect for Afghani players and Afghanistan for that matter. Now, if you think about we losing our point, yeah, come on, guys. ISL has helped us. But trust me, most of the Indian players who are playing, except a few, cannot make it to the highest level. Tell me which of our player has played a whole season abroad. One player. Maybe Gurpreet, maybe Chetri. Who else? Who else? I mean, we had a superstar, Jingen. He went to Croatia, got crashed out. He was he had a knee injury. You think he's not a good player? Guys, the game out there is completely different. So please understand that. So Afghanistan and Afghani players, yeah, they are good. They're playing at a very competitive level where there is no second chances, understand? Because they're immigrants out there. Here, the boys are very comfortable. That's the truth. The kind of money that they are earning in India, I'm sure nowhere in the world they would get that kind of money, with all due respect. So there is complacency here. Ask our boys to go out there. If, you know, if you really want India to do well on a global stage, you need Indian players playing abroad. You need Indian coaches coaching abroad. You need Indian administrators working abroad. Just the, going, just the players going abroad will not help them. Not at all. Because you got you end of the day you hire a foreigner and you expect him to work out a miracle he can't. Your coach is as good as your intelligence of your players. If your players can't make the right decisions and can't move with the ball quickly, that's it. That's the end of it. How many times, if you ever watch Indian football and you love Indian football like me, I haven't seen our national team. Lose a ball. I mean, keep the ball possession. 10 passes, 12 passes. They lose the ball before that. Really? And you want to dream about playing for World Cup qualifications? Come on, guys. This won't happen. You can have the best coach in the world. Bring Pep Guardiola down. He can do nothing. You're as good as your players. You can coach them. You can ask them to open the body, look in front. Come on. How many players can you depend to say, if I play this ball, if I play a square pass to this guy, he will put it in the back of the net. Chetri and Chetri is gone. Yeah. Back in the days when I played a little bit of football, we had I'm Vijayan. He could score a goal. You blindfold him, you score a goal. You had Baichung Bhutia. You had Jopal Anchari. You had Carlton Chapman. You had Raman Vijayan. These boys could score. Tell me how many players do we have today who you can depend on? So we need our players to get the right exposure. We need at least three or four players on the pitch who can score goals. Changte is wonderful, but Changte alone cannot do everything. Thapa is wonderful, but Thapa alone cannot do everything. Who else? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking about Sunil Chetri, uh, the captain leader legend, of course, played his last international match uh, uh, recently. And we know that you have worked very closely with him, sir. Uh, what is that one quality about Chetri that you think sets him apart from everybody else? 
you know, I've had the privilege to to spend a lot of my time with Sunil, and Sunil is a wonderful soul. Number one, he's a wonderful human being. Now that you cannot take away from him, and that is the biggest differentiator. I can talk about tens of qualities, but that for me is epic. Then his focus. If he is into something, he's into it. Sunil is. We're very blessed to have Sunil Chetri, born in India. You know, he's he's special. He's special. I've worked with a lot of former players, but his discipline on the pitch and off the pitch. Oh, what a wonderful human being. God bless him always. And it shows, right? Because the way he has been carrying himself for the past 19 years, he still looks, still has the physique of a 25 year old. And it shows the amount of work that he puts in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Neil eats right, sleeps right. He does everything. You know, he, you know, there, there are few players on a pitch. For example, I don't know if you heard, if you read Sir Alec Ferguson's book, where he would say it was it was a snowy morning, and I saw three or four players playing and doing practices. For example, I saw Ronaldo doing finishing. Even there was snow on the on the on the ground. Sunil is similar, man. You would always see him first and leave last. Sunil is Sunil. You know, he's a guy who doesn't need to work so hard, but he'll always work hard to inspire the whole squad. And that's what take, that's what leadership is. Stepping in front and taking that lead and command and saying, come on, boys, we can do it. If you see him always, he's always at it. He's always at it. And it takes a lot. For example, you're saying 19 years, but his preparation started much before that. Yeah. And nobody knows that story. When he was a Delhi boy, he was missing school lessons to play football. And where everybody was saying, no, 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 don't do this, don't do this. And he's not six feet, you know, he's a short guy. Yeah. Against all odds, he's your highest scorer of the nation. So, I mean, it's not easy to get there. And and as a young player at 17, he debuted at DCM Duran, where they picked him up, where the Calcutta club picked him up. It wasn't easy. So just imagine you're coming from your parents are from a working class background and they don't know about what what's what life gonna throw at you. So and then you say, I'm gonna be a footballer. I'm like, wow, really son, study. He says, No, nah, I think I can make it. So yeah, it's very hard. Yeah. Uh, let me bring Rishwin into this. Rishwin, your favorite uh, Sunil Chetri memory and also uh, a corollary question to that. Do you think he has a chance of coming into management anytime soon? Maybe for the Indian team or an ISL side? Yeah, so coming to my favorite one was the match against Kenya. I think it, that was his 100th match. And he scored a goal, chipping the ball above the keeper that was the best moment for me and i think uh, he he already told to us that he won't be doing any coaching anytime soon and he is he want to spend his time rest, the rest of his time uh, doing his own things because he has he has enjoyed a lot of football has he like he's played so i don't see him coaching in time soon but I I really like him doing the coaching because he do have that mentality to bring young talents out of Indian football as well. Yeah, I think he deserves a rest for a bit and then maybe we can see what happens with uh, the next phase of his career. Uh, yeah, coming back to Serge, uh, the most important question which we I think we have touched upon a little bit already. Who after Chetri? Who you think are the names uh, which who we can bank on for the goals in the upcoming tournaments? I think our next leader on the pitch will certainly be Anirudh Thapa. Because of his intelligence, I've worked with him personally. He's a very sharp, very sharp boy. His leadership qualities are ace. And he's going to really do very well for Indian football. And I, if I'm not wrong, he'll be the next Luka Modric for India. He is He's a boy who has wonderful vision. If you empower him, look, like for example, what Rishan just said, and, and it, it's kind of playing on my head right now. 
that for football fans and this is not rishan in particular for football fans guys you need to understand something not necessary the brightest student of the class can be a teacher yeah it takes a certain acumen to be a teacher so where i would like to see as from a technical eyes sunil to help indian football if he if he if he has the bandwidth certainly everybody deserves a break but yeah i mean then there are people like pep guardiola there are people like fabregas there are people like other i mean look at chavi and alonso who came back after the retirement right into the training pitch but if i if i was to be if i had a say and i would i can request sunil sunil should be a you know coach for strikers that will be the most effective role first and then if sunil has to manage our national team i would really want him to get educated to be a trainer and then become a trainer if for example i uh, this might touch my malayali crowd but i don't think ayam vijayan is a wonderful coach he's the most wonderful player ever but if he would have educated himself to become a coach he would have become india's greatest to become a coach is a special it's very special the skill set is different yeah the ability to forgive mistakes is different to take to to when the team wins to say the team has won when when the team loses says my fault it's a very different mindset you know and as a player it's very different you know you, as a player if three of us are playing on the same team and you would pass the ball to rishman and he would score a goal i would ask you hey sayan what happened why did you not pass to me because i want to score you know i want my name on the scoring list yeah so i mean that is a very different mindset with a lot of people don't realize because they think the greatest players can become the greatest coaches i mean i'll give you another example maradona was he i was think coach? just thinking about that yeah. yeah was he a great coach no because you know he could do magic with the ball which was so easy for him but when he saw others and he would say can you not do this my god this is so easy yeah, easy for you not for me so hence the greatest players i i would love to see them become great coaches but if they educate themselves and they go through the whole process where they again become students and not not say that i was the star then they can learn and then they can grow because learning never ends learning never ends especially when i work with people in france and germany and these two are power houses in the world huh? mind it there are only two or three countries who have ever won the world cup outside europe in the recent 20 years so careful i'm sitting in the heart of the football where the football is played at the highest level and here is a very different mentality they say yes you were a good player but you need to get educated to become a better better coach maybe you see football differently yeah 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 you pick thapa as the long term captain for the future of the indian football team if i were to ask you who do you think uh, is going to be the successor of chhetri in terms of the striker position so what are the names that pop up on your mind i am not very confident on the current crop yeah to be really honest i see changte but changte plays a different position but you'll have to yeah. use him differently so like for example if you realize over the last 10 years chetri has transitioned and adapted to the team that he's been given and also the team has adapted to chetri playing style now how we would use that player who will be the next one because see if you see in france you got a striker known as mbappe you got griezmann there are a few players in and around who can score goals you know but in india who do we have that who's that second player who scored who has any stats even 50% of chetri 20% of chetri so who do we depend on i mean this is just playing russian rule you know <laughs> if there are some stats and they would say okay this is the new kid who's doing well yeah then we can build it up are they wonderful players yeah indian standards they are good 
but would you compare them to international standards and they say that this guy could you know lead the team or or could score for the team i don't have a name even in isl tell me the top 3 indian players who are scoring goals yeah in 10 years, 10 years with isl are you telling me with so many crores of rupees spent nobody ever thought that an indian could do well or everybody thought i want to only win so i buy a foreigner that is why i created indian arrows so that indian boys do well indian arrows have also given us quite a few uh, good players now i know vikram pratap singh was part of the indian arrows team i've seen him up first close year, first year gurpreet was a part of it yeah, jj yeah. was a part of it yeah The whole, team, the whole national team the whole national team and what is so hard for for intelligent people to look and to to build on it no but they all only want to buy foreign players so that's why and afghanistan can easily take us down yeah rishwin same question to you any names that pop up on in your mind yeah right now we don't have any players to say that he can do better as in a striker position but uh, at the same time we also have to think that in isl or in i league there are a lot of foreign strikers but not indian strikers so our players are not getting the chance to prove themselves to that position and we don't we don't lack in quality players but still they definitely need game time much more time to improve themselves and grow as a player so at the moment i don't think there is a name that we can say but i hope we find someone who can score goals for us in the future you know the yeah. easiest way out for india to do well internationally and to find a striker the moment you open the pio thing well, and i'll tell you what i'm not against indian players i'm not But they are also Indian, huh? They are not. You can't rob them of their identity. They are also Indian. It's just that they have certain advantages because they've been in a foreign and playing at a very high level. It's a rule that we. I don't know for what reason we are having very close to our heart that only Indian. They are Indians as well. I live abroad. Are you telling me I'm not Indian? Are you telling you? Are you telling me my children don't deserve to serve my country? the moment you do this you'll have you'll have <laughs> come on guys we qualify for a world cup it's a no brainer but yeah politics is so yeah i can give you five names today who can score goals for india pios you'll be like wow better quality than current crop much better quality yeah of the top of my head the only two three indian uh, players that i can think of would probably be raheem ali and you mentioned chante but he's more of a winger than a center forward so yeah, raheem ali chante if we yeah. if we develop chante to play a different position yeah plays yeah. modern football needs your needs a player to play minimum three positions yeah and if chante only can play in one position i don't think then chant the, the development on chante is really development because he was a bfc product and chante also went abroad to play and chante is not someone who's not intelligent i think he's a very very intelligent person if you play the game of him and, and if and, and he's rubbed shoulders with chetri for years and if he can take that in and improvise i'm sure he can do fantastic for the country you have to understand chante played a certain position because chetri played a certain position but chetri out chante can, can he replace him i think why not if you help him if you groom him guys i am a believer that anybody and everybody can do anything and everything if you enable them if you trust them if you handle them and groom them we can achieve everything but all of a sudden i throw sayan in, a, in with with players and say sayan now come on play for this club and play for this team and you will be like this is not my position nobody knows it i come and play in calcutta i live in germany i won't survive the weather the first day i'll die you come here and you play it'll be minus 5 and i'll be like yeah this is wonderful you want so we need that process and we need to trust 
that our kids can do well. So there are many circumstances around this. Yeah. So that concludes our first segment. <laughs>